Okay, so continuing on. Uh, so for part C, they want us to find the initial voltage across the the, um, the parallel RLC circuit, and so and that this is actually the easy one. Hold on a second. Yeah. So this one is pretty easy. So V of zero is going to be just plug in where you see zero. So seventy five e to the zero um, times cosine of zero minus 4 sine of 0. This is 1, this is 1, this is 0. So you have 75 volts. That's your answer for part C. Okay, this one is a pain in the neck. Okay, let me write this. So we're supposed to find current for part D. We want to find um, current through the capacitor, initial current through the capacitor. So we have I sub C, and we know that that's going to be C D V D T. And that's what we're going to use to find the initial current. Okay, so that's going to be 25 nanofarads times the derivative of our voltage function which is 75, 75 e to the negative 8,000 t times cosine 6,000 t minus 4 sine 6,000 t. Okay, so now we're going to find this general solution and then plug in for time zero to find out what our um, initial current through the capacitor is. Well, to do that, we're going to have to use the product rule. It's going to be the derivative of this term times this term, and then this term times the derivative of this term. And it's ugly. So, let's get it over with. Um, 25 nanofarads times, let's take the, der the derivative of this term, so it's going to be 75 times Eight, that negative 8,000 e to the negative 8,000 t all of that multiplied by cosine 6,000 t minus 4 sine 6,000 t that's the first half of the equation now the second half of the equation is going to be fixing the 75 e to the negative 8,000 t and taking the derivative of what's inside. Derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we have and we have negative 6,000 sine sine t. Negative 6,000 sine t um, derivative of sine is cosine minus 6,000 times 4, 4 cosine 6,000 t. Okay, fix that derivative of what's inside. Mm, did we get everything? Oops, this should be negative 6,000. So easy to make a little algebra accounting mistakes. 6,000 t. Okay. I'm going to leave it up since this isn't a, a calculus class, um, and I'm assuming that the viewer has um, the math skills to simplify that. That all simplifies to this term, e to the negative 8,000 t times negative 60 times 10 to the negative third cosine. 6,000 t plus, plus 40, um, 48.75 times 10 to the negative third sine of 6,000 t. Very easy to make a lot of algebra or accounting mistakes here, but you should end up with this. 
So now at time zero, what is our occurrence through the capacitor? What is I we need that I C of zero? Well, right at zero, this term goes to one. This term goes to one, cosine goes to one, and sine goes to zero. So all we're left with is negative 60 times 10 to the negative third amps. So we have one piece of the puzzle, I sub C is equal to negative 60 milliamps. Okay, put that away for now. Come back to that. Now to find I sub L, what we're doing is we're using KCL at the top node. You have capacitor, inductor, oops, my inductor looks like a resistor. Okay, capacitor, inductor, resistor. Okay, so we're going to use I, I sub L, I sub C, I sub R. So the sum of these should be zero, which means that I sub L is going to be negative I sub C, which we have right now, minus I sub L. So now we need to find the I sub L. And to find the I sub L, we just use Ohm's law. V is equal to I, oh, not I sub L, excuse me, I sub R, the current through the, the resistor. So then that means I sub R is going to equal V over, um, over R. And we have all that information. 75 volts divided by 2500 ohms, that gives us 30 milliamps. Okay, now we have everything we need. I sub R is equal to 30 milliamps. Now we can solve for I, the initial current through the inductor. I sub L by KCL is going to be negative I sub C minus I sub R. That gives us negative, negative 60 milliamps plus third, oops, minus, minus 30 milliamps. And that gives us 30 milliamps. Okay. Okay. So that's the initial current through the inductor. This one is going to be a real pain. Okay. Now we're asked to find a general equation for the uh, inductor current. Now actually that's not too bad because we had to find the capacitor current and by in the process of finding the capacitor current we found the general equation for the capacitor current. So now we need to find the general equation for the inductor current, and then, or the resistor current, and the general equation for the inductor current will be negative capacitor current minus um, uh, the current through the resistor. Uh, okay, let's see. So when we were finding the initial current through the capacitor, we found its general equation. And that general equation was I C of T is equal to E to the negative 8,000 T times negative 60 um, cosine 6,000. Excuse me. Negative 60 times 10 to the negative third cosine. 6,000 T plus 48.75 times 10 to the negative third sine 6,000 T. Oops, 6,000 T amps. Okay, so I'm going to take out the negative 3 and just call this milliamps. milliamps. So that takes care of one part of what we need. We need to find, for, to find I sub L, 
we need to find negative I L I C minus I R. So we have that general equation check. Now we have we need to find I sub R. Well, we use Ohm's law for that. V is equal to I R, therefore I is equal to V over R. So that means we have our general equation from which is given to us. It's going to be the V is 75 e to the negative 8,000 t times cosine 6,000 t minus 4 sine 6,000 t. Divide that by 2,500 ohms, and you should arrive at I sub R is equal to E to the negative 8,000 T times, okay, where's my sub R? Okay, times 30 times. And I'm going to take out the negative threes and just call this, put this in milliamps. So 30 times cosine 6,000 T minus 120 times, oops, just minus 120 T sine 6,000 T milliamps. Okay, good. So now we have this piece, and it's just a matter of doing the arithmetic to bring this together. This is our I sub R. Okay, so now let's add things together. We can factor out an I sub T. Okay, so then I sub L is just bringing these together, right? We have and e to the negative 8,000 in common, so that's going to be e to the negative 8,000 t. And what's inside? We have negative 6, our cosine terms, combine our so cosine terms, we have negative 60, and we have a, um, negative I sub C, so we have to change the signs. So when we multiply through by negative, a negative sign, this becomes positive, and this becomes negative. And we also need to negate the I sub R terms. This becomes negative, this becomes positive. And let's combine our cosines. So we have a, um, up here, we have a positive 60, negative 30, 60 minus 30 is 30. Well, it goes to 30 cosine 6,000 t. Okay, now let's combine the sine terms. We have a negative 48.75 and a positive 120. 120 minus 48.75 gives us 71.25 sine 6,000 t milliamps. And that concludes problem number seven. Hope you found it helpful.